Peter Pret is the former ECB chief economist. He joins us now to discuss this. What are you expecting from this? What do you think will emerge? Well, I think first it's very important to conclude the strategic review. You know, it has taken a lot of time. Uh, well, the pandemic has slowed down the process. But I think it's quite important before the exit from the exceptional pandemic measures, it's the phasing out of these measures. I think it's quite important for the ECB to clarify, you know, the new strategy well before. We have a little bit of time also because of the, the new variant, you know, which, you know, slowed down the exit from the crisis. But still, I mean, it's quite important to conclude the difficulty of the ECB is that you really need unanimity. It's not like, you know, current monetary policy where, you know, it's sufficient to have a, a majority to take decisions. Uh, here we talk about strategy, which means that you need a unanimity. That means also that individual governors have a, a kind of veto power. I cannot imagine a situation, you know, when you conclude the review, and then certainly one governor will say, well, I broadly disagree, you know, with that fundamental aspect of the strategy. And that takes time. It also means that there will be no mechanistic sort of uh, formula, uh, as we have seen, you know, we have discussed in the United States, for example. Uh, it will be more generic and it should be fit yep. to many situations, actually. Do you, think, do, you think that is, do you think that's going to be a problem for the Eurozone going forward. Increasingly, there is criticism that the Fed didn't define its new average targeting program carefully enough, and as a result of which, communication is difficult. Is the, is the ECB uh, mm -hmm. setting itself up for huge problems going forward if it is, if it is even more vague? Well, I, I, well, whatever, whatever. I think uh, the outcome will be relatively vague. Uh, and uh, what will be important is the interpretation of the strategy. There is a key issue in the discussions. The first one is that on inflation, there will be agreement that you go from below but close to 2% to 2%. I think that will be absolutely supported by all governors. Uh, it will be medium term, so there is not a big deal here. It's the same. But the big question of contention today is the symmetry. You know, when you undershoot inflation yep. for a while, you know, do you have a makeup strategy? It has been discussed in the US. The end result in the US was flexible, average inflation strategy. And you have seen that the flexibility is being used. Uh, so uh, in Europe, they're going to be even vaguer, I think, than in the United States. And this is really, you know, because the hoax and the doves, you have big differences. And the drafting of the review will be quite difficult on this. And I think that's the reason why it takes so much time. But if you the can... reality. Go ahead. The reality is that, you know, when you are at the zero lower bound, you know, when you, you have used, you know, your, your, your instruments are very much stretched, you know, that's a different situation. So I think what they will say is that when you are, you know, at zero lower bound, you know, close to zero or lower bound, uh, you may need to overshoot, you know, your inflation objective for some time. Uh, so it's a sort of vague make-up strategy, but there is no strong commitment and no mechanistic. So markets may be disappointed, but I think many in the markets anyway don't expect much more than that. But even the drafting of this is quite difficult. But what makes you think that if we couldn't hit 2% inflation before, that this time is different? What's different? Well, I think uh, in the past there was ambiguity because you say it's below but close to 2%. So the perception in markets was when you overshoot, you know, even for temporary reasons, exceptional reasons, the reaction of the ECB would be more on the hawkish side. Now, uh, it should be symmetric. Everybody agrees on that, that, you know, if you're below, it's not good. If you're above, it's not good. If you want to have 2% on average in the medium term, you know, sometimes you will be below and sometimes you will be above. That's obvious. But the question is, uh, is it just tolerance to lower or high inflation around, you know, the 2%? or will be the intention when you are below uh, to make up, you know, the difference or to try to make up the difference depending on the circumstances. And that's the crux of the matter, you know, where divergences, is it an intention which is closer to a make-up strategy or is just, you know, a sort of tolerance band, you know, uh, which is much vaguer indeed. And they try to find, I guess, a drafting that would go a little bit in the direction of the, the United States in terms of flexible average inflation targeting but the flexibility will be quite, you know, quite important in the communication. So they will say, well, basically, it depends. If you are at the zero lower bound, 
and inflation has undershot yeah. for a while, symmetry implies that may imply you know, that you will need to overshoot. But that's quite complicated drafting and a bit ambiguous indeed. In terms of what else are we going to learn from this strategy review, what do you think the important bits are going to be? Our climate's going to be talked about, the labour market's going to be talked about, the toolbox is going to be talked about. Mm. What else yeah. are we expecting to see? I think the most difficult thing, and I don't think we're going to see much uh, in the outcome, uh, is the uh, potential interventions of the central bank in national debt markets, in national debt markets to counter what the ECB calls fragmentation in the transmission mechanism of monetary policy. We know with the pandemic that the ECB has been quite flexible, and especially in the beginning, has intervened to counter what they call the non-fundamental volatility of spreads. And they have done that very successfully. The question is, when you leave you know, this pandemic crisis period, are you, would that become part of the strategy, or is that really exceptional? Markets are really looking at that because, you know, you cannot go back to the situation which was described just at the beginning of the pandemic by Christine Lagarde by saying, we are not here to close the spreads. And then with the pandemic, indeed, uh, the policy rightly was to say, we cannot tolerate, you know, this, uh, what they call non-fundamental volatility of spread. Are you going to go back, you know, when the crisis phase is over? Are you going to go back to the previous policy of the ECB, not intervening, you know, in fragmentation, or would that become part of the strategy? I fear that this will not be one of the outcomes uh, of the ECB. They probably will not communicate on this. And I think that's probably, uh, you know, a weakness of the communication. But we'll see, yeah. you know, there, there may be. We have a very dedicated viewer writing in asking how the experiment with negative interest rates is going, in your opinion. <laughs> I think the, well, I was, I was present, I presented that to the governing council at the time. The, the big difference is that we thought at that time that negative rates, you know, will be exceptional measures that would not last, you know, so many years and expecting, expect also to last for many more years from now. So I think the, the, the persistence of negative rate is really an issue. And there are many governors today, you know, they don't really like it, but you don't know exactly what to do about this. Uh, so that's the situation we are in. I think they have been quite efficient, uh, but it's true that it has surprised very much, you know, the, the persistence of negative rates for so long has surprised a number of governors around the table. Mm -hmm.